and we are charging. It's a cold, snowy Friday as we embark on a three and a half hour trip up to North Bay, Ontario for our first robotics competition. The route via Highway 11 only has IV chargers, but they're slower 50 kilowatt models. The first stop is Weber's to pick up some takeout for our charging stop in Gravenhurst. At our first stop, down to 33%, 153 kilometers. Total consumption is high at 32 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers due to the snow and the weather. And we're at an IV 50 kilowatt fast charger. So we're gonna start that up. And we're charging. Easily maxing out the charger, 49 kilowatts. The battery's at 21 degrees. Since all the IV chargers along the route are only 50 kilowatts, we stayed there and charged so we wouldn't need to make another stop, using the time to eat dinner and pick up some groceries. When we finally arrived at the hotel, you can see all the snow and ice buildup at the front of the vehicle. Now onto what you've been waiting for, charging at a Tesla supercharger. But first, let's get all the questions out of the way. Can a VinFast EV charge at a supercharger? Only at superchargers with Magic Docs, Tesla's built-in CCS adapter. There's only three Magic Doc sites in all of Canada, two between North Bay and Ottawa, and one in Calgary, Alberta. Can I use a non-Tesla CCS adapter? No, it will not work. Do not buy one, it will not work. Nax and J3400, what's the difference? NAX, or the North American Charging Standard, is Tesla's name for the plug. The Society of Automotive Engineers is now turning it into a standardized complete specification, which they've designated J3400. The existing AC plug is J1772 for comparison. Are there J3400 chargers from other companies? Yes. Charging point operators already have J3400 chargers available for use by the public. Some examples are Electrify America, ChargePoint, and Blink. There are also now home chargers available with the J3400 plug as well. Why won't other adapters work? Tesla's supercharging network communicates with the vehicle. Right now, only Ford and Rivian are allowed to charge, and that's only at NAX-enabled superchargers. Even if you plugged in your non-Ford or non-Rivian vehicle into a NAX supercharger and then used the Ford or Rivian app to try to start charging, it still wouldn't work because your unauthorized vehicle wouldn't communicate with the supercharging network and wouldn't be allowed to charge. What is plug and charge? It's a protocol that defines communication between an EV and a charger, allowing for a charging session to be started without having to use an app. Plug in and let the machines talk to each other. What is required for plug and charge? Hardware and software on both sides, vehicle and charger. Do VinFast vehicles support plug and charge? Yes, plug and charge will be enabled in a future software update. Will VinFast support NAX? There's no information to share at this time. Where can one find more information about supercharging non-Teslas? Supercharging other EVs is a page that answers everything about the opening of the supercharger network. Tesla's map has also been updated to show both Magic Dock equipped superchargers as well as NAX capable superchargers. We are at the Magic Dock equipped Tesla superchargers. And we are charging. We're at 2 degrees, so it's only pulling in about 32 kilowatts right now. And as the battery warms up, it should start pulling more. Since the battery started out near freezing and the VF8 did not yet have a battery preconditioning function, this limited the amount of power the battery could receive. The session peaked at around 62 kilowatts, and I ended the first session after an hour and reaching 59% as it was time to head to their box competition. I did a second supercharging session that evening in even colder temperatures for about 80 minutes. 
Overall, there were no issues using the Magic Docks beyond trying to unlock them in sub-zero temperatures. The only major downside is Tesla's kilowatt hour pricing is much more expensive than all the other networks such as Electrify Canada, IV, Circuit Electric, and Flow. Hopefully once the weather warms up, I'll be doing some more testing at the Buffalo, New York Magic Dock Superchargers as they're closer to Toronto. As for the robotics competition, FRC865 ended up winning the event, the Engineering Excellence Award, and setting the event high score. Thanks for watching, and leave any comments or questions below.